What's good, you yeah? Avatar Frost is here, and my mission is he to help you reach S and beyond, and for that we need to break down the fight. So, first off, as long as you use a unit that gives a buff, that unit becomes frozen permanently, so no Constance, no Dolores, or no Invigoration units in general. Secondly, Revival Timer gets increased by 60 seconds, taking out Laurel, because she isn't going to be back anytime soon. Third, each stack reduces damage taken by 40% except for the continuous damage is a buff that the boss gets one in his first phase that takes like 15 seconds and then two stacks so 80% reduced damage taken in uh, the real boss rush phase now what is continuous damage the only relevant pieces of continuous damage for this fight are burn poison bleed radiant erosion and toxic fire we get to toxic fire later but that's that's the types of damage. Furthermore, as long as a unit deals damage through any of those continuous debuffs or DOT debuffs, however you want to call them, they get healed. So you don't need to bring in healer, you just need to have them bleed, burn, poison, toxic fire, erosion. Next off, the boss has in inert high defense, high magic rest and high physical rest. So not only does he take less damage, but in general it takes less damage. And then lastly, we have increases continuous damage taken by the Arbiter of Frost by 200% for each stack. He normally has one of those, which means he gets 200% more damage for burns, poison, bleeds, erosion, toxic fire. And this is the symbol, which is the cut that kind of bleeds. And as long as you break his shield, which is a mechanic which we'll get to later, it increases to two stacks, which means 400% increased damage taken through burn, poison, bleed, erosion, toxic fire. Now, everybody loves tier lists, so let's have a quick tier list right here and let's talk a bit about it. First, scam category. Venoma has the hex debuff, but the debuff sucks damage wise. Lysia has his own sand erosion debuff, but it sucks damage wise. Araka has her spider toxin, but it sucks damage wise. And Ajax's uptime just isn't good enough to use him for burns and his magic rest down also isn't really the banger. But enough of the scam, scam tier, let's look at the top. So unsurprisingly or maybe surprisingly enough, Nisalt is the top damage dealer in basically 99% of teams. She is super good for this fight and overall she's also the reason why toxic fire is a thing because she has the ability to summon toxic fire which then deals increased damage which will be treated as a burn. Next off we have Anai, uh, for everyone that ha has been hating on Anai, Anai makes a comeback, Anai is burning, Anai does a lot of burns, Anai does damage and that's all she does, she does a lot of damage. <laughs> Praetus, the, uh, the Immortal Codex man himself, Radiant Erosion, High Attack, his Lord skill that you can trigger, High Damage, Booyah, job done. S tier. One of the most, if not the most reliable bleeder, Salazar, Cuke, Cuke being the go-to dude when it comes to poison. You could use Liam and Cutter, but Cuke's uptime is just slightly better. Wrath, surprisingly enough, if you give Wrath to Sorbon Arcana set, man is applying burns like there's no tomorrow with his heavy blow. And furthermore, he's a lord and also he's a free unit, so everyone has him. Uh, also, on the note of a good bleeder that isn't on this tier list is Lugaru for S tier, but let's have a look at the rest. So A tier is pretty much your standard units that are just in your team doing your stuff. So we have Arrogance. Arrogance, if you place him in the second row, he's going to continuously burn and that's what he does. <laughs> Next up, um, we have... Come on, what's your name? Sorkadens. Sorkadens does a lot of burns, does medium amounts of damage. All all those damaging units here all do around the same amount of damage. Then we have Torador. Torador doesn't really do much of damage, but he gives that defense down, so that allows the units to do slightly more damage. Furthermore, he also gives the increased attack speed to one of the more popular factions for this fight, which is going to be the Nightmare Faction. Then we have Twinfiend. Twinfiend is mainly only useful if you can buff someone like Anai and Zillitu. Sargak, Sargak does a lot of bleeds, decent damage, that's all there is to say about him. Zillitu, Zillitu only really shines if you're running it with an, with an Inferno Lord. And then we have the free boy Alistair, 
Is that even his name? Yeah, Alistair, your source of radiant erosion. The important part about Alistair is Alistair, weirdly enough, doesn't heal if he applies radiant erosion through his ultimate. So you would need to bring healers. And yeah, category B, healers. It's not that they're bad. They're just chilling there. They're giving rage region. They're keeping your units alive. And that's the important part. Normally, you don't need to keep your units alive because through continuous damage, they should be able to keep themselves alive. All right. Now that's the tier list stuff is out of the way, how do you build a team? The answer is very simple. Number one, you pick any of those five lords right there, whoever you have, or you go lord, <coughs> or you go lord list. That is also a possibility. So, for example, you pick Twinfin if you're running Zillow to an Anai, but uh, good enough. Next, you pick a bleeder. So you pick either Saga, Lugaru, Salazar, Vladov, or Komodo. Next up is going to be picking a burn unit, which could be. Arrogance, who permanently burns. Anai, who does a lot of burns. Hex, who does rather badly when it comes to burns. So if you're running a Hex, you also need to run a healer. And then we have uh, Lust. Lust also only burns in her ultimate and also only if you have an Arrogance. So make sure you have an Arrogance. Because if not, you, you can't really use Lust for this fight at all. And you do need to make sure that you ult with her to keep her alive. Then we have the staple for every team, the sun, uh, Nisalt, so Nisalt shields in every team, so just use him. Then we have our po poison boy right here, which is going to be Kuke. So Kuke also could be replaced by any other poison unit, but he just has the slightly better uptime than everyone else. And then the last slot for your team is either another burn unit, like for example, Anai plus Arrogance, Arrogance plus Lust, uh, Arrogance plus Wrath, all those possibilities and healer wise you would then have to chan uh, have the choice between Elowin and Hollow. Obviously Elisa can also be slotted in for example for a burn unit or for a bleed unit or even for a lord unit. So he's kind of kind of like a random dude but you gotta keep in mind if you're running him you also need to run a healer. So now that we have the team building out of the way it's time to get into an actual fight show you how it goes and then send you on your way. All right, so actual fight time. At the moment, we're chilling on uh, 12th in the world. Nobody, at least for the moment, has been able to reach triple S. And the most interesting part is that the way the fight works actually has been changed in comparison to on Forerunners. Because on Forerunners, you just needed to apply a certain amount of debuffs and then were able to hit at full damage with your units, which just changed. So yeah, let's have a look at the quick damage breakdown. We're not going to use this team. We're going to use a more accessible team, pretty much just swapping out Torridor. But in general, Nisa does the most damage, Wrath overtaking Arrogance and Salazar. Then we have Cube with some good poison. And then lastly, right down at the bottom, we have Torridor. And overall, you're kind of going to see, see the same thing everywhere, besides obviously the same triple S dudes being Praetors, Nisalt, and Anai. And all those are going to be in the same. And then Zilla 2 can also do a significant amount of damage if you do happen to have a Twin Fiend, which you really need to run if you want to run a Zilla 2. But enough of the talks, let's have a look at the team. So we're going to build ourselves a very simple team, which is going to be Lust Arrogance, Breath, Salazar for Bleeds, and then we're going to finish it off with Knee Salt, and also, where is he? Cube. If you're wondering why the hell is my Cube even 5 stars and promoted, as long as you play the stages, you might have noticed you get a Cube as a reward, and that Cube is 5 star 5 promoted, which is honestly <laughs> really interesting. But yeah, here we go, that's the team. Uh, gear wise, very important. If you wanna run Wrath to any amount of success, you do really want to run him in a Sorbon Arcana set. So let me move myself over so we can have a look at the sets. Obviously, stat-wise, you don't need to be uh, running with gear as good as this. But at the end of the day, if you really want to go for a super high score, then you just need to go with the best gear you have. But yeah, uh, pretty decent Sorbon Arcana set. Artifact-wise, we're running a Scarlet Hunt, which relies on Salazar doing his bleeds on the note of Salazar. Salazar is also running a good Solbon Arcana set, which kind of is also the way you're playing this whole fight, just good Solbon Arcana sets. High attack speed, high attack, high crit damage, and another Scarlet Hunt. Arrogance, same thing, good Solbon Arcana set, decent enough stats, even though the crit damage is rather low, but we have high attack. 
and then we have a ram tier at 25. Last, last on the other hand is going to be run in an Infernal Raw set, not only because it saves you Soulbound Arcana pieces, but she also just works in it better in comparison to a Soulbound Arcana set. Then we have Nisold, where are you? Nisold, you might have already been able to guess it, but um, high attack in uh, around like 200, 220%, high attack speed, high crit rate, high crit damage, artifact wise, tier of twilight, and again, Sorbonne Arcana set, and yes, I know, I know. Now, interesting part, we have, where is he, Cuke. Cuke is going to be, you have two choices. Either you run him in high attack speed, high rage region, so he just poisons as much as possible, or you run him in a Sorbonne Arcana set. Even then, they're pretty much going to have similar numbers and it's not really worth it. Out of all the artifacts, I found uh, Idrid's Gaze to just work, but I don't think any artifact does better or worse, besides maybe giving him a bit more HP through the base stats. But enough of the talking, let's get into the actual fight, which is what we're going to do right here. Let me see. I think I have it a bit too big. All right, here we go. So starting off the fight, let me actually reset it. What I found to work best, at least when it comes to timing your units, is placing Wrath as the second unit that you place. So we're going to go into the fight, bring in, whenever the fight obviously uh, lets us, we're going to bring in Salazar, bring in Wrath, then follow up with Arrogance in the back row, so he has the chance to poison. And also we're going to place Nisad and Cube out of the range of Lust, so they are, that she only boosts our Nightmare units right here. Also, interesting team, we have a total of three ultimates that we need to trigger ourselves. And yeah, honestly, that's already about it. So we've already talked about this reducing damage. We've talked about the increase of damage. Here we're just going to wait. And it's going to be pretty much the same mechanics back to back to back to back. Right here, he starts his shield. We're going to use our Salazar ultimate on the shield. And then after the shield, we're going to be able to go in with Nisold, going to be able to go in with Lust. Here we're just going to speed it up a bit just so we don't take forever with the fight. And the, re the rest, Cube, Arrogance and Wrath are just going to do their thing auto-wise. Right here, again, he does his AoE damage. After his AoE damage, per phase he does it twice. As long as he does his AoE damage, mechanic, I think he calls it, calls it Frost Blast or something, as long, he's, as long as he does that twice, he's then going to summon the shield, and for a certain duration you're going to have two stacks, meaning 400% damage, instead of just a single stack. So yeah, Frost Tempest. He does Frost Tempest twice, and Frost Tempest hits at the beginning and at the end, and that's also the important part with Lust. Lust only heals if you ult, so before certain Frost Tempests, you might need to ult with Lust or she's going to die through Frost Tempest, which we don't really desire. And then Salazar, as long as you have him in decent attack speed, he should be able to ult almost, if not on all shields. And then Nisod, you're just going to ult whenever she's ready. And kind of the same thing goes for Lust. Salazar is pretty much just there to allow us to really deal with the shields. Obviously, if you don't have a Salazar, you need to use someone else, or it might just not be enough damage to break certain shields. So yeah, here again, we can wait for one Frozen Tempest to hit, because that's not going to kill us. And then shortly before the second Frozen Tempest starts, that's when we activate her, in the hopes of her ultimate lasting until the shield, so we have a bit of an easier time breaking the shield. So right here, her ultimate is still active, helping us to break the shield. We go ahead and break it, and then use Nisod's ultimate, which is going to be with the 400% increase. And then right here at 2 minutes 30 seconds, we are already at 750,000 or A. And Frost Tempest again. Now we just really gotta hope that we can activate Lust before the next Frost Tempest, but it should be fine. So yeah, right here we're just going to activate Lust earlier to make use of the damage increase. Cuke is honestly just doing his thing, giving us nice poisons. And the important part is, if you have a Salazar but he's not A1 or A3, you might be better off choosing a different bleed unit actually. 
So yeah, here we're again going to wait for the shields. Activate Salazar. Also go in with knee salt. Now we are ready at S. It got pretty close, but we were able to break the last shield. And that's also what I found. Unless you're running Torador instead of Lust, at least with this team comp, you aren't really able to beat the last shield. So we're just going to go ahead and try to get out as much damage as possible. Here another Frozen Tempest. Attack the shield, but it's not it's not really going to be close. Uh, I mean it's going to be rather close, but we are we are a bit too far away. And after us actually failing the shield, he's just going to do his big explosions, which then kill our units, which takes away a bit of damage. And the only difference between the team with and without a Torador is that you can break one extra shield, and breaking that one extra shield gives you around 70,000 points. But at the end of the day, in both cases, you're going to go and end up with a double S run. So here we go, 1.2 million points, 77 thousand uh 77 million on Nisold and then over the board rather decent numbers with arrogance wrath salazar and lust and the main difference because uh, for the damage with them being higher before is just that i was using a torador instead of wrath so yeah i hope that helped you out this codex is weird and maybe I'm just blind and we'll find a new meta way to clear this. If you've enjoyed this one, leave a like, consider, consider subscribing, share it with whoever you want, and we see each other in the next one.